Questions, why do we need to use uh, native code inside Python? Uh, next, I'll explain you some basic concepts that we need to know. And then we will explore uh, the three approaches that uh, I think are the most used uh, out there. In uh, first place, we'll uh, explain native extensions that are available only in, on CPython, uh, C-types, CFFI, and finally, my conclusions. I know that there are other ways of, of doing this. For example, uh, using Boost, uh, you can do that, but I never tried that, that, that approach. So, and I think uh, using Boost is like a huge monster. So uh, I'll avoid this, this way, uh, but let's start. And uh, also, I, will, I would like to say to you that this is a hu huge topic. Uh, this talk is intended to be just an introduction. And I hope that is if in the future you need to, to extend Python, at least you, you know the tools that are available and the basic examples. Also, my examples have been tested only on Linux and, and Mac, and with CPython and PyPy. But let's start. So what's the motivation? Why should I write in C? I love Python. C is uh, a bit of, it's more difficult, more, more, much more difficult. But sometimes it's, it's necessary because probably there are three main motivations about uh, extending Python. In the first place, and the most, uh, the most used case about extending Python is that we have some bottleneck in calculations. Uh, out there, lots, lots of uh, scientific libraries are written in C. For example, NumPy, all these kind of scientific libraries at the end, uh, what they are doing is executing C code. And why is Python slow? Well, there is a bunch of reasons why Python is slow. First place, as far as you know, it's an interpreter language, so we have a huge overhead because of that. I'm talking now about only C Python. I know that PyPy, most of the things is are are improved by the JIT, but uh, now I'm talking only about C Python. Also, we have this box arithmetic. We don't have to take care about overflows. Uh, interpreter does for us most of the cases. So another overhead. All the the, oper the operators and operations are dispatched dynamically, so each time we have to go to look for a method, we have to do the same steps, so another time more overhead, dynamic lookup, uh, this is an extreme dynamic languages, so everything can change during runtime. There is a lot of reason why Python is, is slow, but uh, this dynamism is, is good for us, so, but everything has trade-offs. Another reason can be using legacy code. Let's imagine we are working in a laboratory and some scientific uh, wrote uh, a Fortran code and nobody wants to compile that or touch that. So what we can do is wrap this code into Python and operate with another uh, tools that we have written in Python so easily. And finally, integration. That is a bit out of the scope of this talk, but let's imagine that we're writing for example, a game engine, and we want some scripting language. We can embed a Python interpreter inside it and, and use it. But this, this uh, motivation is out of the scope. It's the other way around. The two main reasons is I want to use um, C or C++ or whatever inside Python, and integrating Python inside a, a game engine, for example, is the other way around. OK? so. Now, probably most of you know what is a shared library. If not, basically it's a, a library that only is loaded only once into memory, and we can load during runtime. It's not statically compiled. So Python is, is a dynamic language. We need this kind of, of libraries that are shared libraries, OK? It's more, much more complex, but as an overview. And let's start with uh, native extensions. That uh, basically is the C API that is provided by, by C Python interpreter. So basically, what we have is access to the runtime. Uh, 
given some macros, uh, some API calls, and so on. And I think the best way to learn things is doing things. So let's do a, a hello world example that basically is the Newton method to approach a function, nothing new. Uh, so here we have the example, and I'll try to explain you what what is what. In first place, we need to include uh, this header that is python.h that give us access to all the, these macros, uh, functions, uh, and runtime access. This has the definitions, for example, of pi object, um, pi parse tuple, and so on. Then this is our main our function that will calculate the the approximation. Okay, this function will return a pi object that is basically the main uh, struct that is declared on C Python, and it takes uh, a pi object that is self, like uh, everywhere in Python, and another pi object that is a tuple of arguments. As, as you know, in Python, the arguments can be a tap, is a tuple of arguments and a keyword argument that is a dictionary. So I declare here two variables. I parse this tuple because, as I told you, the arguments uh, is a tuple. And using this function, what I'm telling to, to this function is I'm expecting two floats, f and f, here. And I want to assign to these addresses of memory, guess and x. OK? If this doesn't work, something bad happened. I can check the more things, but this is an example, OK? Here are nothing interesting, just the calculation of the function. And I cannot return directly to CPython interpreter a raw float. He needs a pi object because uh, it's what he is expecting. So I need to, to build a pi object, and this is a, some kind of helper method, helper function, sorry, that uh, CPython API give us. So here, what I'm telling is, given this guess that is a float, build for me a pi object. So I am returning a pointer to pi object, OK? Also, um, when we are writing extensions, we are writing a module, so I need to declare which, me which methods uh, are in this uh, module and a way to the interpreter to, to know what is declared in this, in this module. So in first place, what I do is, OK, this module, we have this function named Newton with a pointer to this function that I declared before, that is this one. This will take uh, only um, arguments and not keyword arguments and the doc string. And I need to tell CPython how to do when it loads the, this, this file, this shared library. So what I'm telling here, OK, initialize this module with the name Newton with these functions that I declared before. And this is my Docker stream. And how do I compile this? We are lucky, and in the standard library, we have some, some tools. In the module details, we have the setup and the class extension. And here, what I'm telling, oh, this is all from first time, sorry. <laughs> uh, what I'm doing here is, OK, build an extension with this name and given these this files. Here, I can also declare some, some compiler flags and so on. This is a very simple example, so with this work. And what I do is, once I run setup, I import Newton, my module Newton, and I call my function Newton, and it does the work. Simple, well, not so simple, but it works, OK? But uh, I'm a very skeptical person, and I really like to know how things work. I'm a very fan of uh, Carl Sagan, so I wanted to know how this works internally in, at CPython level. So I was looking how shared libraries work and so on. And I end up in this man page, this DL open. This is the system call that takes care about uh, loading uh, shared libraries into memory at uh, operating system level. So I, well, let's grab into CPython code. Well, this is the, sorry, uh, this is the symbols that are Exposed once we compile using this this mod this utils module. 
uh, do you remember this init Newton that is the first method that is called when a uh, shared library is, is loaded in ZPython? Uh, okay. So when I did grep, I end up in this file into the CPython code. What it does is, okay, I try to load this shared library in the path. Uh, what Python does is try to load a Python module, it does fallback, 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 end up in trying to load a shared library and end up here. If everything is okay, this is only error handling. He uses this other uh, system call that this, what it does is look for a symbol. And if you can guess what symbol he looks for is this init Newton uh, symbol to load during runtime our, our shared library. Okay. Uh, well, we are writing C, so we have to deal with, uh, with memory. If we are using Py objects, we can also declare uh, our custom Py objects and that are define our structure, classes, and so on. Uh, we can use the garbage collector. Uh, well, I did a talk yesterday and this garbage collector has a cycle detector and to handle directly Py objects, we have to take care about the references to the object. So, uh, well, it's, it's tricky but we have at least uh, the garbage collector, that, that's the word for us. Uh, also, as you know, in Python we have ex uh, exceptions and in C, Python, in C uh, this concept doesn't exist, so uh, the, the mechanism that is uh, used on, on C Python is we have to return null, null when, when an error happened and if we want to raise an exception, we have to register this exception on the runtime. How do we do that? Okay, we, are in a, we have a simple example. If something wrong happened, we register this exception. This is a basic exception with some message and we return null, okay? Uh, if you are writing extension for Python 3, there is some minor uh, differences. Uh, the module is declared def differently. Uh, we can give more information to the runtime. Just take into account if you are writing exceptions uh, between that you want to be uh, compatible in both versions. And well, it's also different for the, this uh, initial uh, function. Uh, any doubt until here? Can I continue? Okay. Yeah. The, another approach that we have is C types that uh, is included on, on the standard library, so we don't have to install anything. It comes with our Python distribution. And what is C types? It's an advanced foreign function interface for Python. Uh, allows us to call functions from shared libraries, and we can create, access, and manipulate uh, C data types. Uh, we have to take into account that when we are using C types, we are working on ABI level. So, and for example, in C++ there is no real standard ABI, so it's a bit a mess. But, well, let's let's continue. Uh, here we have the types that we can create and manipulate using C types. Basically, are all the types that we have in C. What it does is, do you remember how do we build uh, pi objects from raw floats? And under here, underneath, what it does is use this mechanism for, for us. So, well, we can declare at, at Python level a mapping to three structs. So here, for example, we are declaring a point a structure that has the two fields, x and y, that are integers. And we are creating another error struct that is a rectangle that has two points. So we can use previously defined structures to, to map C, C structs, okay? And again, let's do another example. Uh, we'll implement the well-known Fibonacci recursive function uh, on C. Map this as a Python code, so we can call this C, C version of uh, Fibonacci. And just an, as an exercise, uh, measure the differences between a Python 
implemented version and a C rapid uh, version. Okay. Nothing new here. And here we have the example. We have to import C types. Uh, C types as uh, functions that given a shared library that we have to comp compile manually. So if we are using this approach, we will have to take care about compiling this as a shared library, uh, taking into account that uh, the compiler has to, to uh, use, we have to use fpeak uh, flag and so on. Uh, differences between operating systems, so it's more work for us. But we load this uh, library and we create a function that wraps the call to this uh, Fibonacci function that we wrote in, in C. What we do is we have the handle here that is leave fib and we know that the symbol exposed on, on this uh, library to call Fibonacci is fib. Uh, we have to cast our argument to an integer because we cannot call directly uh, as a Python object. And here we have our rapid Fibonacci function. And here we have the Python version. If we time it, well, C function is much faster, but yeah, I told you that Python is slow, but it's uh, nicer. <laughs> and also, I would like to show you an example about using legacy code uh, rapid in, in Python. So what I will do is uh, use some existing Fortran, Fortran code. I went to GitHub, tried to select among all these Fortran libs that are out there, not so much. <laughs> and I end up in this uh, library, that is a set of mathematical tools written in Fortran. And I want to wrap something using C types. I find this that I think that that's the mean, I think. Uh, it takes an, an array of reals that I think that are mapped as floats in C. I compile using gfortran and I get these symbols. Someone in Fortran told me how to not mangle the symbols, but I don't remember how. So again, we use the same approach. Uh, we import uh, C types. We load the library that I generated, the shared library using C DLL. I, I get the handle to the min function that I'm interested in, and I give it a better name, min, better than underscore, underscore, leave, blah, blah, blah. And I define, with C types, we can define the argument types that this function will take. In this case, uh, what it's taking is uh, memory addresses, pointers. And here I'm telling, OK, it takes two C floats. And we can also define the result type that it will return. In this case, it will return a float. I create an array of floats, and it will work. I call mean with these values and this this works and it's pretty simple okay again Carl Sagan came to me look how this works so again I did uh, grab DL open and we end up here in this this file calproc.c uh, and what it does again is once I I call this method uh, cdll what it does is it ends up here and it returns the handle to this library. You can see here that this C types underscore DL open. Uh, DL open is over, uh, overwritten in some way in, in C Python because uh, it takes care about the differences between operating systems. Okay. And finally, we'll explore the CFFI, that is the, the newest one. Uh, this is created by the PyPy guys. Um, it's also an advanced foreign function interface for Python, uh, as well as C types allows us to call functions from shared libraries. And we can also create access manipulate C data types. But the interesting part is that we can work also on API and ABI level. That is interesting. 
uh, it's mostly the same as C-types, but we have some some nice things with with this. And it's the recommended way to stem PyPy. Uh, I have to say that it has some overhead when we are dealing with C-types because it's mostly uh, Python code, but on PyPy it come to the rescue, so it goes quite well. Here we have a very simple example. Uh, we have to import from CFFI FFI. That uh, is the main object around. And we are telling here, OK, given I, I will use this uh, function, so I give the function signature. Sorry. Uh, this is printf. It's, it takes a variadic argument list. OK. Ideally open using none, that by default on CFFI will, will load libc. I create a, a new string, an array of char in, in C with a value world. And I use uh, printf directly from, from Python. But uh, we can use on AVI level. Again, the, the example that I did before, that this was the Fibonacci example. So what I do is I create, again, this FFI object. I define the function signature that I will use. That in this case, is a, it returns an integer. The name is fib. And it takes an, uh, an integer. The interesting thing is that if we don't know, for example, we are wrapping a struct, and we don't know the order of the fields or all the fields, we can, we can say a subset of the things that we know. And the compiler behind this will take care for, for that for us. IDL open the library, and I use Fibonacci. This is working on ABA level, same as C types. But the interesting part is that we can also work on uh, API level. So for example, here we are working with a very simple function that is Fibonacci. And instead of compiling by yourself and all this problem that we have using, uh, if, for example, if we are using different operating systems, uh, this is a bit, uh, a bit of a mess because multi-platform native code is not easy. So for example, here, instead of loading a shared library, what we are doing is, OK, I'll paste my code here. And CFFI will write this into a file, compile for us, load the shared library, and we can forget about we can yeah forget about everything. So it's very very nice, and we can call and it will give us the the value. Also, without declaring, well, we have the definition here, so it takes an integer. Everything is okay. If we pass, for example, an string, it blows us blows up. It expects an, an an integer, and we are using a, a string. Okay. I think I'm almost ending. Uh, do you remember how do we have to define structs in C types? We have to create a class that inherits from some class defined on C types. We have to use these uh, underscore fields. Uh, it's a bit of tiring, okay? On on C types on CFFI, sorry, uh, we can use use directly C. So for example. This is not a fair example, but if we are dealing with uh, files on, on operating system level, we can go to man page, copy the struct, paste here, and we can use um, file, file structs. In this case, I'm defining a point struct that has two fields that are float. And in two lines, I can use uh, point structure and, and interact directly, directly with C. Let's notice that this is not directly a pointer. If CFFI, what it does is allocate the in memory the the whole struct. So, and in this case, if we are using floats, the values are zero. So, be careful with that if you are using CFFI. And again, I try to know how how this works. And again, it uses the same principles. We take the handle. Uh, using DL open, and well, this is some internal stuff, but we have to know that 
the three main approaches use the same mechanism that operating system give for us. It's not so complicated that as I think when I started working with the extensions. <coughs> so my conclusions are that we have in this talk three different ways. There are more out there, for example, boost and so on. The three of them are based on the same principles. They use basically operating system tools. And in my opinion, we go from less portable, that is uh, native extensions that uh, are very are tied to C Python. Even there are small differences between Python 2 and Python 3 to more portable. C types is also included in on, on PyPy, for example. And if we use CFFI, we can work in both in C Python and PyPy. And also, in my opinion, it's harder to know and to learn the C Python API because we know we have to know in some way how C Python works. That is is nice and is good for you. But if you are in a hurry, you need to improve something. Can be can take time to do to easier ways. And um, I finished. I want to tell you that we are celebrating EuroPython in, in Bilbao, Spain. If you, I would like to, to see you over there. And if you have some question. Okay, thank you, Francisco. Uh, if, there are, if there are any questions, raise the hand. Uh, thank you for the talk. And I'd like to ask, in the last example, so with uh, CFFI, uh, when is the compilation of the code uh, done and uh, how persistent is the library? Uh, the f when it executes the, this verify function, uh, it checks if it's compiled before. If not, writes the file, compile, load it. So this has the first time some overhead. But the next time, it checks internally if this file has been compiled and so on, if there is no changes. And if there is no changes, just uh, open the shell library. If it is something like a script, let's say, and it's uh, executed more times and not a single execution, is it uh, still uh, persistent? OK, yeah. thank you. It's just compiled once. Um, Other questions? Two questions. First, uh, which compiler it uh, uses? Yeah. Uh, the, I think I'm not mm, very sure, but in, I think there is a environment variable in the operating system, so it tries to use this environment variable. Um, if it's not set, probably some predefined GCC. I don't know. Okay. Next question. If you go on the next slide. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, the other one. Okay, this one. Uh, you have written a point asterisk. Yeah. Um, but what uh, can you remove the asterisk? You know, you can create. Uh, um, you cannot create on, cannot, uh, on a stack. You always have to you know, define a pointer to some structure. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks. Other questions? No one? Okay, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, in CFFI, uh, just to get it straight, does it work with CPython and PyPy? Yeah. Okay. And um, can you go to the not last slide, the one before? Well, which one? Uh, one before the last. No? No, no, no. Go to the last. The last one? <laughs> yeah. This not the Google one. The one before. Okay, more portable, easier. Same principle. Uh, so, what's the point of using uh, the native uh, API if it's more portable, easier? It's all win win. Well, uh, this is more about uh, historical reasons. You have to think that uh, CFFI has, I don't know, one year, two years, I don't know, it's very young. And there is a lot of code in written using native extensions. For example, one, one of the biggest one is NumPy. So migrating all of this is is not possible. It no, no, no. I, w I was not talking about mi migrating. But if I have to write C code and I have to pick one way to do it, 
CFFI seems the best way always? It has or? some overhead on CPython because uh, we are dealing with uh, C data types directly in, directly in Python. But uh, as a win, we can run also on, on PyPy. That, in my opinion, is a good move because you can get some better performance by f for free in some cases. But it depends on, as always, it depends. Uh, you have the tools. Uh, in my case, when I need to write some, some C, I use CFFI because it fits on my use case. Others, it depends. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you use CFFI, so you can use PyPy also. For example, we are using, when I, where I work, uh, Postgres driver that is C copy G2 CFFI and was quite nice. I have written some algorithms using CFFI. No, no problem so far. So I'll recommend you to use CFFI. Okay, thank you. Other questions? No. Hi, I only use the native C Python uh, API so far. So I would like to know when using CFFI, how do you handle when your C code depends on an external shell library? Can you link to you other can, libraries? Yeah, and you can link with on CFFI API. You can link with other libraries. Um, but do you specify it in the verify call or? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Also, you can define compiler flags and so on. So. This is a very simple example, but you, it's more flexible than, than this. Other questions? No one? Okay, thank you, Francisco. Thank you.